Biafra. This is Biafra Liberation Army Network coming to you again. Please do subscribe, like, share, and comment. Today, I want to speak to those in Plateau State, the elders, the stakeholders, even those who claim to be the leaders of Plateau State. I want to tell you that enough of this crying, it is time to grab the bull by the balls. I did not say grab the bull by the horn. When you want to grab a bull by the horn, it is a metaphoric expression. It means to show courage. When they say to grab the bull by the horn, it means you are showing courage in doing something. But what the Fulani headsmen are doing to you in your land, it has gone beyond trying to show courage. Today, I want to speak to you guys to dare them in the face. It is time to protect your land. It is time to grab the bull by the balls. It is time you do what you have to do by any means to protect your land. My fellow Biafra friends, today I'm speaking this way specifically to the elders of Plato State because it has come to my attention again that they are still being attacked in Plateau State. The other time we heard about Bokos, all the killing and pillaging that happened in Bokos, and the military, the so-called military, they said they should blame it on the devil. They said the devil was responsible for the pillaging in Bokos, Plateau State. But just about five weeks ago, we saw the mayhem that happened in Okwama. The city of Okwama, you saw how it was alleged that some men, they took the life of the military. And suddenly the whole community of Okwama had to pay for the sins of a few. My fellow beer friends, this is the sixth week. And just yesterday was a time the governor or I'll say yes, the governor of Delta State was given permission by the military, the zoo, Deti Gotami military of that zoo called Nigeria. They gave him permission to visit Okwama. As the saying goes, when you fool me once, the shame is on you. But if you fool me twice, the shame is on me. In Niger State, over the weekend, we heard about the same zoo military kicking the bucket. About seven of them kicked the bucket. But till now, the communities in Niger State is safe. People of Niger State, they are sleeping very well at night. No community in Niger State was ransacked. People's houses were not burnt, destroyed. Communities in Niger State were not sent running and packing into the bush because some military men kicked the bucket. So I called it a different strokes for different folks. But today, I want to speak to the who is who in Plateau State. The days of going to the zoo government to plead and beg them to protect you, those days are gone. It is time for you to grab the bull by the balls. It is time for you to dare the devil, stare at the devil in the face. Let the full and killer headsmen know you are the owner of your land and not the full and police, the full and military can stop you from controlling the resources and managing the affairs of your land. My fellow beer friends, today permit me, we need to listen to this man. He is a stakeholder from Plateau State. I'll thank the person that sent me this message, this video, because he made some vital points. But my anger, my dismay, my disdain with this gentleman is they keep on repeating the same thing. 
It happens to you. You wait there. It happens again. It happens again. And it happens again. And you keep on carrying out the same action. Going to the authorities. Pleading with them to protect you. Let me fall back. Let us listen to this gentleman in this interview he gave. And I will break it down throughout the whole video. If you are with me, let us go there. Listen. Let's try and understand uh, some of the developments, unfortunately, playing out in Plateau State. We'll try to get across to the Commissioner of Police, but uh, they've got several meetings today, as they tell us. So uh, we've got uh, Honorable Dachon Bagos here with us. He was a member of the House of Representatives, representing just South East Federal Constituency from 2019 up until 2023. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, up, up to, not just 2023, up to when the Court of Appeal did the injustice to the legislators in the flat trip. There's going to be a year to that, isn't it? Yeah, well. That's why we left it with year. So you yeah. can have that perspective, but the year is bottom line. Yeah, well, that's so uh, this scenario, much as it's very hard for lots of people to grapple with and try and understand why the authorities cannot rein some of these people in, could you just, uh, talking about this time and again, almost sound like a broken record. Why is this so difficult? For this to be addressed is killing. You, you, you know, it has uh, all the time, we we'll always say that it is unfortunate. Okay. But uh, it's as a result of negligence, uh, Chamberlain. Uh, you and I have um, discussed much about this insecurity in Plateau State and, um, and the country at large. That there are measures that are supposed to be taken, but up to now, uh, nothing is yet been done. Hold it there. Measures... Hold it there first. Hold it there. He's just said there are measures that needs to be taken, but up till now, nothing has been done. A few months ago, we saw what happened in Bokos, where the military, they were saying they should blame the devil. Until now, he's now saying nothing has been done. Young man, if nothing has been done, it is time for you to do something. It is time for your people, the youths, the men out there to take the matters into your hands. It is time. Do not wait for your enemy to right their wrongs. It's not done, but let's continue. That will always calm nerves so that it will, uh, people will, will feel that uh, either government is working or something. But it is not just about calming down nerves, it's about how have you been able to implement these possible solutions? Okay. For instance, a uh, book that has been on the front burner uh, um, in the past uh, months and past years. There are nucleus of these terrorists around Bokos. Listen. And the most unfortunate part of it is that the school, the, uh, the Plateau State Polytechnic uh, University that was attacked, you can see where students are staying, the off-campus uh, satellite towns. You will see the terrorist nucleus around these students. But the word you will now hear is that, oh no, those are just headsmen. Who did this, sir? This is the problem. That's what this man just said now, underline it. That is the problem. When you identify them, they will tell you, no, these ones, they are just headsmen. They are farmers. But those doing the killing, those doing the pillaging, those doing the assault, they still come from that location, that locale, that community, that settlement, where the military, they are telling you, no, those ones who leave them, they are just settlers. They are just headers. Leave them alone. But at night, while you sleep, these same people are the ones that come to carry out all the pillaging. Plateau State, it is time for you guys to wake up. It is time to grab the bull by the balls. I'm not saying grab the bull by the horn. 
the days of showing courage is long gone. It is time to show those caliphates, show the military men out there who support and empathize with the headsmen. Show them just belongs to you. Let them know Plato State is your land. You know what you have to do to protect yourself. It is time for you to do that. Listen, continue. Using the name headsman, at the end of the day, when something happens, these people come out from those nucleus camps that the so-called headsmen are staying. What happened that how can a settlement that you call that is for headsmen, people will come out from those settlements in bikes? And each bike, you have two, three on each bike, run, driving through the school compound, shooting spiritually. Hold it here. This is the hold on here, John. That's the problem I have with people like this. They have all the facts in place. They have all the information. I'm speaking of this because I have a first-hand account that students that were fired in that location, they know those who did it. The village where those people they are settling, they know those who are responsible. Those that come that came to do the mayhem in that school, in that it is time for you to show them that you are also mad. Let them know, say, madman pass madman. They shouldn't tell you, don't allow the zoo military to tell you how to respond. They have come once, twice, not three times. They have been doing the same thing to your people over and over again. It is time for the youth to wake up. You know the community where they are staying. You know where they came from. You knew where the sound of those bikes, more than 100 bikes, coming from a particular location. You saw the dust in the air. You knew the village, the community, the settlements that they came from. It is time the men in Plateau State wake up. It is time for you guys to wake up. The days of waiting for the Zoom military to carry out what they would do, do not expect them to do that. Let's continue. Nothing as a so, 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 so imagine that if these people now come out with uh, have an agenda to come out that look, they are going to wipe that school. Chamberlain, I can assure you that the casualties that we could have been talking of at this moment will be unimaginable. Okay. Talk to us about possible motive. Because now there's this narrative that people, uh, which is beginning to gain traction, that Mineral resources are also a factor in this. Is okay. that right? You see, I have said this, that look, <clears throat> all the areas that have been attacked on the plateau are areas that have mineral resources, are areas that are agrarian, that you can farm, that, that the farm produce, you have large uh, span of, of farmlands in those areas. Bokos is one of the, the, the Bokos is one of the major producers and farmers of potatoes that the Irish potatoes that everybody uh, bring Irish potatoes. Oh, yes, sir. sir, with all, all due respect, I respect Joss and Blatu for farming. I respect it for that, but what they are after is not just your farmland. The Fulani Cabal, they are not known for farming. When it comes to farming, you can respect or give that to the houses. Hausa, they are into farming. The Fulani Cabal, they are into cattle rustling. They are headers by nature, not farmers. So please, with all due respect, don't come and tell me that they are doing what they are doing to you because of they want to come and farm. No, it is the resources they are after. The same way they went to Oklahoma. The same way they've been going to all the places, the locations where there are resources. That same way they have come to your own community. 
I'll be a liar to, to if I make you, you know, come with a suggestion that they are coming to your community because of the farmland. They want to come and farm because you are good farmers and they want to till your soil, take over your land so they could farm. I'll be a liar if I agree with that your submission. That statement is fallacious. They have come for your resources. The same way they are attacking people in Enugu State for resources. The same way they are attacking Ibadan. We, we had the bomb blast some few months ago. Oyo Ibadan. We had the bomb blast. That same way they have come for the resource in your land. I must make myself clear on this one. The Fulani Cabal, they don't care about famine. If they care about famine, all the Almagiris in the north, they would have been great farmers. When the houses were running things, the level of Almagiri was low because the houses, they were known for farming. They are, you know, you can, you can from their onions, their, you know, their carrots and the rest of that. But the Cabal, they are known for what? Cattle rustling. They are headers. All they know how to do is to parambulate from state to state, country to country, in search of pastoral grounds where the cattle can perch and rustle. So if you are assuming that they are coming to your land because of you are good in farming, you are good in planting Irish potato, and they want to stop you from farming so that they will farm or out farm you, you are making a mistake. There is a resource in your land. They know what you have in your land. You may not know, but China has scanned the whole of Africa. They have scanned the whole land, the terrain in that Zuko, Nigeria. They know the locations where those resources are. I'm telling you from a first-hand information. Take that from me. They are not there because you are good farmers. And they want to out farm you. No, no, no. They are not coming to your land to take over your land and continue with your farming. That's not what they are there for, sir, with all due respect. They have come for your resource. So let's take it back and hear the question the journalist asked him. The man they call Chamberlain, he's a journalist from that zoo. He asked a vital question. And this guy. To an extent, he ran away from the answer by stressing more about them going to into famine. Just listen, 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 listen. Uh, also, a factor on this. Is that right? You see, I've said this that look, all the areas that have been attacked on the plateau are areas that have. Mineral resources are areas that are agrarian that you can farm, that, that the farm produce. You have a large uh, span of, of farmlands in those areas. Bokos is one of the, the, the Bokos is one of the major producers and farmers of potatoes. That the Irish potatoes that everybody uh, bring Irish potatoes from Plateau State. It is Bokos that is one of the the, the heartbeat of potatoes on the plateau. Now these people can no longer go to farm. Where will you get the potatoes that virtually feed the entire nation? Unfortunately, today, most of some of these uh, eateries and farms are importing potatoes now from South Africa. What happens to, to, to Bokos, to Berkeley, to Rio, and some of these places that they are the major producers of these uh, uh, of potatoes, uh, uh, tomatoes, and so most of these places today, people have been dispersed as a result of insecurity. Not just being dispersed, they are even afraid of going to the farm. The governor have made so much emphatic effort encouraging people as bought as much fertilizers and putting in trying to see how we can have uh, rangers across uh, the farms to be able to protect farmers during this farming season. But beyond that, 
their strong political will. Okay. What is the tactical will to be able to address these issues? How can we be able, as a people and as a country, mm -hmm. that look? These are issues that the possible solutions, and again, ignoring justice, the justice system. Today, you have only uh, maybe five military men at the checkpoint okay. going into Bokos. Listen. But you now have, still within the Bokos axis, people coming out in bikes. Listen. How can those five military men be able to engage those people in bikes with heavy ammunition? And we we're now there, far. We're there. That's a very good point. He had just told you that in Bokos, where there is killing, in Plateau, in Joss, they only have five men, five military men on their checkpoint in the whole of the Bokos. But in the land of the Biafra, every hundred meter, there is a checkpoint. All the different states, the old states in Biafra land, every, nearly every hundred meters, there is a checkpoint. Not only that, the insult, the humiliation they give to our people. If you are in a bus, they will tell you to come down, lift your clothes up, and trek towards the location of the checkpoint. The Fulani Kabal, they have their military in abundance in the land of Biafra. But in locations that really need the presence of the Azu military, they have refused to protect them. Source of five people, source of ordinary five men they gave to these people. Despite you saw what happened some few months ago. Where people were, were bur buried, there was mass burial in shallow graves. We saw it. But your Zoom military, they gave them just five people and checkpoint in a place where there is a presence of the Fulani headsmen, a place where there are presence of Boko Haram, of Hiswap, of ISIS. They only have five men in the whole of the community, only five policemen in their checkpoint. But in the land of Biafra, every nook and cranny, every street, every state road, every federal road, you will see hundreds of soldiers saying they are doing checkpoints. In a place where we have banished the so-called headsmen from coming. In a place that even Boko Haram, they dare not, the hardcore Boko Haram men, they dare not come to the land of Biafra. We have sent them packing, we have sent them running. Yet, your Zoo Dirty Gotha military, they are in the land of Biafra. This is why our Prime Minister said, we don't want any checkpoints in Biafra land. That's a bad investment for the zoo. Take those military men, take them to Bokos. Take them to Plateau. Take your military men from Biafra land, take them to Joss, where they need or where they are needed. They are more valued in an area like that. Their presence is invaluable in a place like that, where you have your headsmen, your Boko Haram. Oh my God, have mercy. Hey! Nigerians that who do not this thing. You Nigerians that still love Nigeria. Now who do not this thing? This man is out here in TV begging, asking the government to help and protect them. They refuse, but they sent their military to the land of Biafra. Every hundred meters, there is a checkpoint. In Those checkpoints must come down. They must go down. They must go down because we have declared we don't want your military in our checkpoints, in our land, in our roads. Get them out. Get them out of the land of Biafra. Take them to where they are needed. How can in the whole of Bokosh, despite what happened some few months ago, 
the people they've not even healed you are giving them just five military men on checkpoint and when the bike men are coming the headsmen in their bike 100 bikes carrying 300 people what do you expect those five men to do now i get it can you now see the agenda of the caliphate their agenda is the love the mayhem, the presence of their headsmen in all these special areas. Or your state, Joss, Plato, Enugu to an extent, Enugu, Nde Enugu, people of Enugu, we are watching you guys. We are watching you, you guys, because I'm not happy that in Enugu, we are having issues where men have come to protect you. You are sabotaging them. And you know in your land, there is uranium in your land. There is californium in your land. The caliphate, they know about it. They are coming. They are coming to test your land. But somehow they've been able to poison you against the BLA. Our Prime Minister has done his best. He will bring men to protect you. The next minute, your own people, they will blackmailing them, showing them the camp, the, the, the resting bay, the fort of our men. This man just told you now, say, the government don't love you. In Bokos, where they need the presence of the military, they only give them five to deal with Fulani headsmen. Think about that. Bokos, where you know that's a hot spot. The locality there is a, there, there should be a red line there. Say, come across this whole place. At least 100 military men should be there, morning, night, and day, protecting the people. But they'll say, no, they won't do that. They give them just five. Source of five people. Source of five men. In the whole of Bokos. No me tokamu. No me tokamu. Now this man tokamu. Let's continue. Listen. I go further to ask that if truly security are looking into these issues, what has technology been able to do? Before coming here, okay. there was traffic. I quickly looked at my Google map. It shows me that there was traffic. And I, I further look at the entire... Pro it shows... It shows... Uh, it, it showed me the building of channels. And I found out that, okay, cars are not moving around here. This, uh, this is the access around. So if just as an ordinary citizen with my phone... I can geolocate a location and see the movement of vehicles Listen. from my phone. What happens to technology to be able to see that? Look, Listen. These are nucleus uh, of this bandit here. What is the kind of movement? So we mean that as a country with the heavy money that the National Assembly is being uh, has channeled to uh, to issue of insecurity, we cannot at this can particular moment get the latest gadgets to be able to, uh, to look at these issues yeah. and uh, to look at it. So this is like perhaps one of you, the challenges, Mr. Michael, just, just, just a second. Perhaps the, the challenge is not that of technology or anything. It's perhaps is that of the human. I recall last year, sometime around June or, or thereabout last year, we had a conversation with the governor of, of the of, of the of the state, and it was highlighting the fact that there are non-state actors that are very active in the state occupying certain local governments. It was in that interview that he also revealed that maybe sometime about around that time that he also revealed that about 80% of all that is happening, all the unrest and all that is happening in Plateau State has one thing or the other to do with what he also talked about, you know, mineral deposits in the state as well. God bless that man that said it. God bless that governor. I believe he's the one that said that stuff. 80% of all that is happening in Plateau State has to do with mineral resources. Respect to these journalists because they know their job and they use, you know, they, they are being meticulous. Oibo. They are being careful not to over give out the answer so that the zoo government will not ban them.
but they are trying to be meticulous. They are giving this man, they are, they are spoon feeding him the answer. They know the answer. They know the, because they are journalists, they know the problem. But this man was trying to discuss more about, oh, is the farm, is the farm. No, sir, with all due respect, it's not a farm. They don't want your land because they want to be farmers. <laughs> that would be stupid. The Fulani headsmen, the Fulani cabal, even the Fulani oligarchs, they are not known for farming. When it comes to farming, a Hausa, eh, eh, if Hausa were the ones coming to your land, to kill, I would say, okay, they are coming to get that your soil because, you know, it's a very... No, no, what is happening is the thing underneath the soil, the resource underneath your land. And this journalist just said that as at last year, around June, he spoke with the governor and he told him that there are so many stakeholders who are involved in that thing happening in Plateau. And also in the ultimate analysis, he now said, or he revealed that 80% of all what is happening in, in that state is about the resources. Which is why today I am telling those in Oyo, the Yoruba, you signed a partnership with me, Yala. I hope you know you have signed your death warrant. I hope you know you are you have officially said goodbye to all your states. And now the colonel told you, or your state is next. Your or your state is next. Just in this month, we saw two things happened. In the month of April, two things happened. The lady they called Abi, what's her name? The wife of Abiola, who is also a secret girlfriend of Tinubu back in the days. She was a friend to Tinubu back in the days. That lady, she came up with her Yoruba nation, planned by Tinubu government and the rest of them, just to rubbish the real Yoruba nation. Strangely, it happened in Oyo State. And also, you all remember that bomb blast that happened, Ibadan, Oyo State, resources. When they asked the governor of Oyo State, she was saying, oh, it was some um, illegal miners. Do you now, can, can you dot, F, can you pinpoint these things? Follow me in this journey. I know why I'm speaking this way. Follow me in this journey. You can, when you carry out an in-depth forensic analysis, you will see that when you trail everywhere where there is a problem, it has to do with resources. There was a bomb blast in Ibadan. And it had to do with resources. The governor, Sheima Kinde, came out and used psychology. He said, oh no, they were illegal miners. Despite it was the zoo government that gave them the contract. Buhari government, Buhari a Fulani man, he gave people, he gave some Fulani men, some strangers. Men from Mali, Fulani men from Mali, they came to Ibadan. They were mining, they were testing your soil. Now, at a time when they wanted to see how deep the resource is, they have found the resources, but they want to know how much content in terms of land mass, how much content of these resources is in this place. They now dropped a dynamite. Not even a small bombo, they dropped a dynamite to to you know to till the soil to flip the soil upside down to bring the inner crust of the soil to the top and they tested with the satellites oh the quantity of resources here is very very high and suddenly Miet Yala has now come to Oyo State again Ibadan or your state to sign a partnership with the Yorubas to say, okay, going forward, 
we now have an understanding. We now have a truce. We now have a peace pact. We now have a memorandum of understanding that going forward, the Mietiala, the cattle headers, the Fulani headsmen can come with their cow peacefully. They will not fight you, the farmers. Feel free to farm. It is okay. Do your farm and I will do my cattle rustling. Just keep doing what you are doing. We will not disturb you. When we see you in the farm, we will not fight. We will not kill you with AK-47. Keep on doing you and we will be doing us. And you guys all signed it. But before your eyes, you heard this man in Bokos. This man here in Joss where he said, they know Know the people that did those things in Bokos. They know the Fulani headsmen, the settlers. They know the village. They know the land they are settling. They know where those bikes are coming from. They know the community that in the daytime, they act like they are their friends. But in the night, you see the headsmen in bike coming from that community to cause havoc in their own community. To those in Plateau, they, they assumed they were living peacefully all these years until they found out resources in Plateau State. Lord have mercy. Only God knows what they found in Plateau, the type of resource. Very, very sad. So respect to the journalists for... He went back and told this man, but I spoke to the governor. He said there were some stakeholders who are responsible for what is happening. And in most cases, 80% of all the things that have happened in Bokoso, in Joso, in Plateau, it has to do with resources, natural resources underneath your land. You think they're after you stop you from farming? No, they need you to leave that farm because it is time to dig the soil, till the soil and take your resource. People of Oyo, OYO, on your own, or your state, want to do. Let me speak your Yoruba. Want to do. <laughs> they have come. Want to do. They have come to your land. You have welcomed them. Officially, you have signed the document. You have sealed your fate in that state. If you dig deep, you can see those that sign those things, they are the offsprings of the Fulani Caliphate. Be careful. Who you, look, this is what you are, you, are, you are dealing with. They say when you want to eat with the devil, you need a long spoon. It's there. There's a reason why they wrote that thing. When you want to eat with the devil, you need a long spoon. Let's continue, I beg. Is it that it is intractable? There are also allegations of people, who, you know, land grabbing and the rest of it. Is it that these issues are intractable? Because it's about the people. It is take it back, sir. Take it back. With the governor of the of the, of the of the state, and he was highlighting the fact that there are non-state actors that are very active okay. in the state, occupying certain local governments. It was in that interview that he also revealed that maybe sometime about around that time that he also revealed that about eighty percent of all that is happening, all the unrest and all that is. Happening, Happening in Plateau State has one thing or the other to do with what you also talked about, you know, mineral deposits in the state as well. Is it that it is intractable? There are also allegations of people, who, you know, land grabbing and the rest of it. Is it that these issues are intractable? Because it's about the people. It is something that happens between or among the people. Is it that the elders of the of the communities, the community development associations, the, the legislators in the state cannot call all the people who are supposed to, you know, ensure that there is peace to order and ensure that there is peace and enforce that peace using the security agencies in the state? Is it intractable? Hmm. If you're thinking about buying well, well, I, 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 it, it's kind of uh, uh, very, I can tell you that there is no situation that the plateau people cannot handle themselves. And you know, mm. There is no situation that the plateau people cannot handle themselves. Oga, I believe you. 
because I know plateau are people you, you cannot joke with. You guys are men with hearts. Obiago. You guys are men with lion hearts. You are brave men. You are warriors. But it beats my imagination. I don't know why you keep on waiting, daily darling, and hoping that your enemies, the full and the men dressed in Nigerian uniform, dressed in the Nigerian military regalia, you're expecting them to come to your land and protect you? You will hear what this man will say that will blow your mind. Just watch. Listen. Listen now. From the point of view that plateau people are not stay, uh, living in peace or they don't want visitors, that is far fresh from it because there is nothing like clash. Because if it is a clash, that is where the community leaders will come and sit. That is where the development association will come and sit. But this is a situation where people come in from different angles that you don't know where they are coming from. People come in with heavy armory. Uh, Memory that you don't know where they got them from. People come in that you cannot even identify them. Mm. Come, attack, and uh, uh, and withdraw. Mm. So that is not; those are not plateau people at, in in very entirety. No, it, even the community my, that my is apologies. within the school, yeah. in the name of the uh, of a settlement of headsmen, if we knew that these people are terrorists, that these people are not. Uh, 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 if we are not accommodating, plateau people could have said, look, we you know, know you, you, we know you as terrorists. Even if that issue that you just raised and, now. And could identify those people are the, are the security agencies. If that is the mistake you are making. The only people who can identify them as terrorists are the security operatives. Sir, I'm sorry, with all due respect, that's your statement, they flawed. You in your community, you should know who is who. Which is which? You are supposed to know the who is who in your community and which is which. But let's continue. Listen. That issue that you just raised, yeah, just a second, yeah. Honorable. Uh, Honorable, just one second. Even that which you just raised now raises an issue because you would recall why we were all growing up. You don't get into a community and you are a total stranger and no one will accost you. I don't see how that is possible. Okay. I mean, this is something that is known among all African communities that I am aware of. At what point did we lose that value? Just as you said, strange people come into a community and no one is able to identify them. And then no one raises the issue. You talked about artillery. It raises the question of intelligence. Mm -hmm. I know the information available to us is that governors get intelligence reports from time to time. Mm -hmm. Is it that these things just happen willy-nilly? No intelligence official was able to capture it before it happened. And even when it happened, indeed, the DSS was unavailable, the police was unavailable, available, military formations around were unavailable mm -hmm. and unaware uh -huh. that such an intelligence breach was going to happen. Okay. Is it, is, how can anyone explain that, Honorable? Not that just we have lost our value of uh, of, uh, of intelligence, but let me tell you why we have reached where we are. Uh, the political will to really identify these issues of headlong many years, 20 years ago, is what has led us where we are today. Because when we started identifying these people that, look, we don't know these people in our community. What you now hear that, oh, we are religious. What we now hear that, oh, we are ethnic. What we now, you now, because if you now identify someone, so, oh, no, this is part, this person, it, it's uh, it, it's from our religion. Listen. Please, don't even go there. Uh, so before you know it, someone will be arrested uh, uh, in jail and uh, tomorrow you will hear that he has been moved to Abuja and after three days you will hear that again the same, the, the same person or group of people have been released on the ground of religion and ethnicity. That has been one of the major cardinal points that has, that has taken us to where we are today. Boom, hold on there. Lord have mercy. Exactly. It comes back to religion. Can you see it now? When you catch them, you arrest them, and you give it to the police or the army, they send them to Abuja. After one day, they release them. Within three days, they are back in your community. They say, no, those ones, don't touch them more. 
they belong to us, they are our people. Amoteku in Yoruba land, you think catching Boko Haram or headsmen and giving them to police means you have done a job? You are wasting your time. They will release them because they are there for an assignment. They have an, assi an assignment they must complete. Exactly what is happening all across that zoo. This man just explained it now. Even when they apprehend them, say, we don't catch them. 20 came, we caught five. These are the five. They carry the five to police, to army. And they will send them to Abuja. Within three days, they are freed and they will return back to that community. Today, my people, I'll wrap it up here. I want to speak to those people in Joss. To the elders in Joss. Most especially the youths. It is time you guys rose up and grabbed the bull by the balls. The days of just showing courage, catching them and giving them back to the police, working hand in hand with the police, with, with those you, you, you assume they are, they are part of the authorities. No. They were the ones that sent them to your community in the first place. It is time to grab the bull by the balls. It is time to stare at the devil in the face. It is time for you to fight your own battle. The time has come because I, I don't know how long you, I mean, for how long will you, would you hold back? You've been attacked and attacked and attacked. Now they are coming to your hostels. The next one now, they will go to that university. They have stopped you from farming. Now they want to stop you from schooling. It is time you guys do what is right. It is time to protect your motherland. You're making the biggest mistake if you assume that the military or those in the armed forces, the police in that zoo, if you assume they are working hand in hand with you to solve the problem, then you're making a very big mistake. Because when it is even glaring, when it is clear for the whole world to see, they will blame it on the devil. They will say, that devil walk. It is the act of the devil. Blame it on the devil. That devil do one. A military man said, Na devil dwam. He didn't call the headsman. He said, Blame it on the devil. But when it came to Okwama, he blamed it on the people living in Okwama. The whole of the community was brought down. Lord have mercy.